So this is the question that I think everyone needs to ask themselves, especially if you're getting into, you want to be a healer, a coach, a spiritual guru, whatever it is. It's very important to understand one thing. Why are you getting into it? Are you getting into it because the passion for it is a driven through this deep need and desire to take care of others because this is the trauma in which you worked out your being. This is how you identified yourself. Or are you doing it for a completely other reason? Like you to, to I'm just noticing there are so many people. The minute they find out they have trauma, the minute they start to work on themselves, the minute they watch the videos or read some books, they hop on and they start to want to help everybody else. And then they get frustrated that they're not getting clients or they're not being seen or not being heard or why, dear God, I have these amazing talents. I can help so many people. I can channel. I can feel. Yeah, it's true. Almost all the world can channel and feel and all that wonderful stuff. Now, why am I saying this? Because I remember, and I've had many, many clients who've come to me and been like, this is what I want to do. I want to quit my life and do this only for a living. And I'm like, and as we go really deep in, we discover that it's, it's very much um, a desire based uh, that's born out of trauma and not out of a space of truth inside. What does that look like? So I'm going to explain this in hopes to help you see more clearly. Why? Because when we are born in a traumatizing family, we're having a traumatizing family experience where we're not heard, we're not seen. If we're not heard and we're not seen, and no matter what we do, we want to be heard and we want to be seen, and we're intuitive, and we have psychic abilities or mediumship or whatever it is that you have, right? We have all these talents within us, but we're not being heard or seen. And then we go through our own uh, journey where we're like finding out, discovering these gifts we have. We want immediately to be heard and seen by others. And so what's the best way to do it is through the healing career, right? Taking this career as, as a thing, right? As a passion which it is, but you really have to hone in. It took me years to figure it out because I'm like, I have such a deep attachment and passion to serving others and to helping them feel better and to make them feel better and coaching and workshops. But my attachment was so insane to it. It's like my entire worth, my entire value was attached to that. So if I didn't get as many clients as I wanted or expected, I would feel depressed and sad and out of whack. And if I did get the right amount of clients that I needed, I would feel satisfied. But it was always a very momentary state of being. It was a very, very much a momentary satisfaction, but not, not a deep, fulfilling satisfaction that lasts forever. Not saying that you're going to be satisfied and it's going to last forever in whatever you find. You're always going to evolve and grow and and, and into something else. But in general, it's like, it's like if clients don't show up or as many as you want, or the workshop doesn't get as many people, something happens, you feel empty inside. You feel hopeless. You feel useless. You feel that you have no value. You feel worthless. You start to question yourself and your beliefs and your values and your identity. And it, it's actually insanity to be quite honest. So in time, as I started to self-reflect, and sit with myself a lot, a lot, a lot, and try to understand like, what is this urgency inside? What is this panicked version of me that keeps showing up all the time? And, you know, and this immense love, I still in, totally love my career. I'm just doing it from a different perspective right now. I love what I do. This is what I wanna do for others. I do channel all this wonderful other stuff. I do tune in. I do have a very special abilities um, getting to know people and understanding and, and letting them feel like free and happy right after a session. It's true. It, it, I do have these abilities. However, it being such an attachment to me, it was, it was the only place where my career, even before doing this as an interior designer, 
even that career, it was the one space that I would feel happiness and joy because I can do something. I was in control of my life. I would uh, lead teams. I would do interior design work. I would like whatever it is. I was like in charge and I would get praised for it and I would be heard. I would lead meetings and I'd be heard. And the same thing was happening with this field of work that I've been in for over 18 years now, where it, it was still in attachment. It was my happy place. It was the place where what I channel, what I see, how I can help people, I'll be heard. Unlike when I was trying to help my family or friends, they would diss me or they would like take it in, but then it, it wasn't satisfying. And so it felt like a constant state of like, I'm so attached to this career is because I get to be seen and I get to be heard. Right. And I get to be believed. So just just know that um, it's like the herds of people are getting into this career path. Herds. It's like a crazy amount. And you can't trust them all. Of course, there's a whole like narcissism in that also. But another version is the empaths that are doing this. A lot of them are needed in other other parts of careers in the world. They can't all hone into this. And it's for you to recognize when I'm having a session with someone, when I'm running a workshop, do I feel like uh, finally I'm being heard, I'm being seen, I have value, I have worth? That's, that's the thing, right? Is that the drive? And then when you don't have the clients or you're not busy working, just doing stuff just to feel worthy, like, do you feel empty inside? That's the thing. I would feel so empty if I wasn't busy working, which is coming up with workshops, being on websites, fixing my website, doing this, blah, 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 a million things, waiting for clients to come, clients show up. I feel euphoric. Once they're gone, I feel so deplete, like so sad that, you know, they're not there. It was such a mix of emotions, but it's like work was my sanctuary and it didn't matter how it showed up, but work was my sanctuary. Work is where I felt more valued and worthy. And so a lot of times in the healing world, if you're, if you're starting to heal or you're starting to do this and you finally found a bit of your voice and you're being heard and you want to be heard more and you want to have your voice more, you're going to notice and recognize that this might be one of the careers that you're going to choose because you want someone to just sit and listen to you and say, wow, I love what you're saying. Wow, I resonate. This is what you're needing. This is what you're needing more than anything. So you're going to go into really high highs and really down lows because you're going to get high when a client comes and you're going to go really low when the client doesn't show up and really high because your worth is attached to it. Your entire worth is attached to it, <laughs> which is really, really interesting because once I discovered that about myself, it took me a while to admit it to myself, first of all, because I'm like, no, but I'm, I'm fantastic at what I do. I'm, I'm amazing at what I do. It's incredible how people shift just being in a session with me. It's just magical. I love it. But it, even though I am great at what I do, my attachment to it being my worth was killing me, was killing me inside because it meant that if I didn't do this, then I wasn't worthy. Then who is going to be, how, who am I, who, who am I going to be seen by? Who am I going to be heard by? Right? So one of the things that happen is when you're, when you have that, I want to be seen and I want to be heard, which obviously a lot of the world is going through. A lot of the world is on YouTube. A lot of the world is on Instagram. A lot of the world's on Facebook. Everyone wants to be seen and wants to be heard. Everyone wants to feel appreciated. Everyone wants everybody to be like, wow, your life is amazing. Wow, what you said is incredible. Wow, this thing, the post you wrote is amazing. Wow, this book you did was, everybody is dying to be praised. Everyone is dying to be told that they're worthy. Everyone's dying to figure out a way to feel worthy. And so in the spiritual world, becoming a healer of some kind, it's just this deep desire of the ego, I'm going to name it as it is, of the ego desiring to be seen and heard, of your younger child desiring to be seen and heard, of whatever version of you is wanting to be seen and heard. So before getting into this career path, because it's not an easy one, you've, it's, it's not as simple as it looks. There's a lot of back work you got to do. There's a lot of stuff you got to do. There's so much work you got to do that by the time you get to that client that makes you feel euphoric, it's a lot of effort. And a lot of people, uh, this becomes another, like I call it like a narcissistic relationship where you're in a, in a narcissistic relationship with your career, 
with your healing career. Like now I'm a healer. I, there's a narcissistic relationship. It's like, oh, wait, I have to be good enough to do this. Then clients will come and you start to search and read and do and try to figure out like, how can I fix myself so that I get more clients so I can become a success? Like all these people that are making millions out of this business. That's another reason a lot of people get into it. They're like, I can make millions just by sitting in my home and, and sharing my advice with somebody, right? Because now you don't even need to get certified, which thank God you don't. But, you know, it's like, it's like these utopic dreams about, about a career that is really based on truly uh, elevating somebody's energy to a higher realm. So speaking of this, so that's one point. The second point is there's the spiritual narcissism that's happening. That's absolutely insane. So it's also a cesspool for so many narcissists to jump right in. Why? Because there's a ton of empaths who are like, throwing themselves into these spiritual books and seminars and workshops and giving themselves, they're giving all their energy to other human beings because they believe their stories that, oh, I was a success. I made it big. I did this. I did one, two, three, four, and you have to all follow my one, two, three, four. This is the perfect cesspool for narcissism. What else is it? Right? They're going to come in. There's a bunch of these beautiful lit up empaths that are broken or like in distress and confused about who they are and they're just their supply now here here's your supply tons of these empaths just waiting for somebody to like lead them take control of them gaslight them manipulate them tell them tell them bullshit and have them follow them what do narcissists want they want they want to be uh they want to be worshipped right and what's the best career to be worshipped in a healer a spiritual guru worshipped it's a worshipping kind of career who are most of the people that would love to be worshipped? And this is like, this is like the best career path they can follow and they can manipulate as many people as they like. It's basically a cult style. Narcissists. It's the best they can come on and you'll see them. They'll, I suffered and now I found the light and now I feel so much better about who I am. Let me show you the way because I know what I'm doing and I've come up with these different techniques and tools that just will support you and like they will manipulate you so blindly. Why? Because you're like in need to be seen and heard, dying to have worth and value because you've been so broken in your head. You feel broken and hurt, you know? So you really got to watch out. You first got to ask yourself a million times, what am I doing? If you're choosing this as a career, what am I choosing this career for? It is not an easy path. It is so much, I keep telling a lot of my clients, and I've said this so many times in my workshops, if you're in a career that you like, even if you don't love it, if you like it, and you're a light worker and an empath, all the teachings that you are teaching yourself, all the awakenings you're growing into, that corporation, that job you're in, whether it's teaching pharmacy, whether it's a CEO of a company, whether it's a mechanic, whether it's a, doesn't even matter what career. You're in there, you're the light being in there, okay? You're the light being, and we can't have everybody popping into becoming a healer. There's, it's just crazy leaving all the other institutes to go through hell because no, but none of the light workers are there. It's crazy. And then the light worker wants to go and do healing. And what happens to the poor light worker? It gets completely smashed into smithereens because it's taking all these courses and it's crazy. It's like, oh my God, this course, this course, let me certify in this one. Let me pay a 10 million here, 10,000 here, 4,000 here. Let me take private sessions here and private and just, just they're getting abused left, right and center. They can't even tell who's a narcissist and who really is doing this and who's doing it because they want to be seen and heard. They can't even tell the difference anymore. It's just mayhem, mayhem, mayhem. So please watch out and take care. If you want to get into healing and you are into this path, li listen to yourself. What are you doing it for? To be seen and heard because you lacked it all your life to feel worthy, right? To become something that others will follow? Then no, you know, watch out for the narcissists out there. It's a cesspool out there. All, so many of the people that you know are like of the greatest names, I'm not sharing any names, of the greatest names are actually narcissists, manipulators, gaslighting people to believe that, hey, I'm telling you what to do. It's not working for you. Then it's your problem. Then there's something wrong with you. My technique always works. Then it's your problem, right? And they manipulate and gaslight and take your worth away and take your value away.
watch out, take care. Just bring your awareness back to you. Ask yourself, ask your body, what is happening here? Am I being driven by fear to take these courses? Am I being driven by fear to become a coach? Am I being driven by fear is like, what is it? What is my drive? What is my intention? Why do I believe that person 100% and I can't believe myself? What is happening within me? Within me, people, within me. You're the one that needs to, to like take at least a course on how to understand your intuition, okay? And you're not the same like everybody else. You're not the same like anybody, the way you attune. You might be similar to someone, okay? But you attune differently. So just take care. Don't get into becoming a healer. Don't just throw yourself in that. You're going to burn out in three seconds. It is not an easy path to take. If that is your calling, you know that it is. And it isn't because you want to be seen or heard. It's because something else is telling you inside that this is it, right? It's going to come from a different space. It's not going to burn you out. It's not going to be exasperating. It's not going to be a momentary like band-aid happiness. It's just going to feel peaceful and good inside no matter what. And you will also not be attached to it for your dear life. You won't be upset that, oh, it's not working. It's not happening. You're going to be able to easily let it go. Like I let it go for two years. I was like, I can't, even though clients were coming, I was saying yes to them. But my attachment to it was, no, this is, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing it because I need to be heard and seen. I need to figure this out for myself internally. Like what is wrong with me? What do I rather have? Because the attachment was so insane. It was driving me insane. And so I was watching and going to courses and studying more and more and more where I'm going into my mental mind, which didn't help anything because when clients wouldn't show up, I would break down thinking, oh, what did I do wrong? What else do I have to incorporate? What do I have to change in me? What do I have to do? Crazy attachment. So let it go, release, figure yourself out. Don't follow people blindly. Before taking a course, really question yourself a million times. What am I taking this for? What is the true intention behind it? What do I want? What do I believe I will gain from this? What do I want to gain from this? Will I be consciously aware when something is being said from this teacher, this professor, this guru, this spiritual being, this psychologist, psychiatrist? Am I attuned to what works for me and what doesn't? Can I trust them? Can I not? The biggest thing is trust. Can I trust myself? Can I trust divinity? Can I trust this person? That's all you need to do. If you don't trust them, you leave. You immediately leave. You don't say, oh, well, I paid for the whole course. Let me take it. No, you leave. That easy. You come first. Your well-being comes first. Okay? You want to become a healer? Question yourself a million times before diving into that field. Is it because I want to be seen or heard? So just for you to know, that was part of my journey it's very important. It really gave me a lot of clarity and I wanted to share this with you guys. Share with me your comments about this. How do you feel about this? Has this given you some insights about yourself and maybe why you're throwing yourself into the healing world so intensely without really contemplating with yourself and being curious about your own emotions? Now, if there is somebody that you do want to follow, I recommend Wayne Dyer. Read his books, listen to his YouTubes. They're relaxing, they're truthful. I like Abraham Hicks. I've seen some comments about people not liking them. I think they don't understand what Abraham Hicks is. That's another one I suggest you can check out, Abraham Hicks. Um, you can, If you're into manifestation, which they all are, but into deep manifestation, look into Neville Goddard, Florence uh, Shiner, I think. She's incredible. Um, read those books. Get into that. Get into these independent individuals. You can read the Tao, right? You have nothing to lose and everything to gain, right? Just simple things, easy things where you can start to learn how to decipher for yourself, then choose a course where you'll immerse yourself in and dive right into it. Anyway, this is my advice. You can take it or throw it in the garbage, but it's up to you. I love you all deeply. Don't forget to subscribe, hit like, leave your comments uh, at the bottom, and you can also check out Expand with Mel and Rain, my podcast where I actually do sit and channel very interesting things and debunk a lot of stuff that is happening in the spiritual realm and especially about narcissism. I learned, I know how to uplift your mood and let you walk out fearlessly through narcissism. Like let's stop fearing the crap out of these stupid narcissistic people if we all found our power. Anyway, go to Expand with Mel and Rain. You'll hear a lot about it there. Take care of yourselves. Love you dearly. Bye.